hello guys and welcome back again to my channel it's your girl faith martins how have you guys been hope, hope you're keeping safe so today we'll be talking about the replacement of foreign names back to our african indigenous names if today is your first time seeing me on YouTube, you are absolutely welcome. Please do not forget to give this video a thumbs up at the end, subscribe to my channel, and share this video. The early European and Arab explorers and settlers in Africa depended majorly on maps and local history for their information and local place names. In the process of settling, some of these place names were transformed, while some were eradicated totally and replaced. Obviously, some of the current existing names for African places still bear some colonial names. For example, countries such as Nigeria, Syria alone, South Africa, just to mention a few. Recently, young people in Abidjan, Côte d'Ivoire, changed a street sign named after an ex-president from Bouvard Valerie to Bouvard Thomas Sankara. A bridge named after a French general, Pont de Gaulle, who was renamed after an Ivorian politician, Biaka Boda. This is such a brave move by Ivorian youths. Shortly after some African countries gained independence, they tried to rename some places in these African cities. Some foreign place names changed to local place names in the post-colonial Africa, just like the Gold Coast, which is now Ghana, the Northern Rhodesia, which is Zambia, the Southern Rhodesia, Rhodesia, which is Zimbabwe, the Portuguese Guinea, which is Guinea-Bissau, the French Guinea, which is currently Guinea. So many but to mention a few. I stumbled on an article by a young African that projects Africa to save her culture now or be doomed forever. I would like us to discuss this article together. Do not forget to leave your comment in the comment section as to discuss this article. It says, Last week I sat in my office wondering why Mandarin Hindu star and Japanese are now among the world's most popular languages despite China, India and Japan all encountering European colonialism. It says, as I made a little research and realized that China, India and Japan all kept their languages and culture, even changing names of their towns back to original pre-colonial names. And if there was an aspect of their culture hindering development, they simply modernized it. Culture is a conspicuous beacon that distinguishes a people and gives them an eternal identity. In China, India and Japan, we see how culture makes a people not only greater than their colonizers, but also unique players on the modern global stage. China and India, for example, went further to resisting English. In China, the Penking was changed back to Beijing, whereas in India, Mumbai was changed back to Mumbai. May I remind you that in Ghana, Gold Coast was changed back to Ghana. Nigeria, as in many African countries, we, we largely retained our colonial city names with its attendance and consequences. For example, Pothakot. Pothakot was formerly Uguocha. Uguocha means he, white hill. It was changed to Pothakot and has not been changed back to its original name. In Cross River, Calabar, it's still Calabar and not the original name, Akwaakma. In Lagos, it used to be Eko, now Lagos, and has not gone back to its name, Eko. Culture embodies a people's unique language, traditions, ancient civilizations, behavior and customs but by far language is, is its number one component and he's basically asking now how far has africa fared language wise he replied saying the simple answer is terribly today we exalt foreign languages and denigrate our local dialects as i have seen some africans who come to the uk he basically lives in the uk currently he says Africans who come to the UK struggle hard to speak English more than the English people. How can we grow without an identity? How can the world respect us without our own self-respect? Sadly, growing up in the African system, 
in the in the educational system for example if you speak any language other than english you are severely punished and it's called vernacular how then can we grow our african identity if this continues up until this moment up until 2020 students are still not allowed to speak their indigenous languages in schools well except you have the indigenous language class which lasts for like an hour in a week or four hours in a week at most that is the only time students are allowed to speak their indigenous native languages in schools any other language spoken during school hours is, is marked as vernacular and such student is severely punished. And I went ahead to say, how can we regain our identity if we keep upholding to our colonial, our colonial master's language, which is English? In our African schools today, our kids know more about Mungo Park and Lord Lugard, more than they know about the great King Jaja of Opobo or Oba Ereka of the great kingdom of Benin. This is so true. Aside the colonial history, pre-colonial era, post-colonial era, history is Nigerian history is hardly taught in schools to students. Personally, I learned about King Jaja Obopobo in one of our books way back in elementary school. While I think way back school for um, class four or five, we were taught about King Jaja Obopobo in one of the comprehensions. All of these things are not inculcated in our history books given to students. How then do we uphold our identity for the upcoming generation? Well, thanks to the internet, but sadly less percentage of Africans have access to the internet or internet enabled phones. How then do we inculcate this culture to those people in the rural areas that do not have access to either internet enabled phones or the internet in general? He says, as it was true in my days in primary and secondary school, it is still true today that our kids know more about World War I and II, more than the Aba women riots led by the great Margaret Epo, or the Nigerian Civil War fought between 1967 and 1970. All these are clear anomalies. He says, African Africans must learn from China, India and Japan. We must stop abandoning our great indigenous cultures if we are to remain relevant in the future. And now is the time for great African cultural reawakening. The renaissance must start now in this generation. Let us relearn our native languages. Speak them to your kids. Teach them to transfer these languages onto their own kids. Let us proudly bear our African name. They are our symbolic strength. I stand among the few who are guilty of not bearing the African name in some certificates. But this is one of the corrections that should be made in this generation. Employ your kids to bear their African name. Give them their African traditional names. Let them be proud of their African traditional names. Teach them the language. Teach them the culture. All this brainwashing must stop. Our African masquerades are not evil. I see stories of people saying, how would I probably would go to the village to watch the masquerade. I probably go to the village, in fact, to watch the masquerade. But I shy away from coming back to town to tell people I went to watch the masquerade in the village. Because people tend to tell you the village masquerade is evil, you dream about it, they do evil things to you spiritually that you might not know. I, I have, even before starting this niche on this channel, I have always embraced my African heritage. If the African masquerade, that's what we call Mao in Igbo land, if the African masquerade is seen as evil, why isn't the Santa Claus seen as evil? Why do people celebrate Halloween as well? Let us end this brainwash system in Africa. Celebrate your heritage, celebrate your culture. The African beads are not evil. If you can appreciate the Europeans wearing their beads or the whites wearing their beads, why not appreciate your African beads? Nothing African is evil. The African traditional way of worship is still not evil. Those that practice voodoo, not everyone who practices voodoo is evil. Same as people who practice Christianity. Not everyone who practices Christianity is righteous or right. Some still practice Christianity and still act evil or still have evil secret doings. Appreciate your culture. Let this brainwash end. Let's stop seeing everything African, everything black as evil and disdain. 
hopefully i'm able to pass a message through this video if today is your first time seeing me on youtube you are absolutely welcome please do not forget to give this video a thumbs up subscribe to my youtube channel and share this video i'll see you guys in my next video bye